Hello, this is John Kenalopoulos from our office in Athens, Greece, clinical professor of ophthalmology at NYU Medical School in New York City. This is quite an interesting case. 72-year-old lady, she had 24 years ago a very successful graft for keratoconus that, uh, you, as you can see, subsequently also had cataract surgery. She has very severe astigmatism, over 20 diopters. Uh, and as you can see here, the graft host interface inferiorly has the hist. There has been a quiet shift there from obviously a persistent eye rubbing and um, we're we're trapped in these situations to address this if we only look at the cornea topographies as quote unquote recurrent keratoconus we're going here in the sign for the image topographies and of course the uh, upper left image shows some inferior steepening that resembles keratoconus but when we look at the bottom left map that shows the thickness of the uh, cornea and flags red where the graft host interface is, we can see that that interface has thinned tremendously and is bulging out. So in my opinion, addressing this with refractive surgery is not the treatment of choice. We will go into the uh, graft host interface and try and revise it. I'm gonna try and show you this again with uh, another elegant way. This is the anterior segment OCT by OptiView, and you can see in this cross section, um, the severe thinning of the graft host interface that happens uh, usually in fearly, and it is from overt eye rubbing that these patients never cease to do. So, in case of uh, uh, redoing the uh, the graft here, we opted to go back. You can see here a 15 degree blade, and manually reopen uh, whatever is left from that graft host interface. Uh, quite careful. This is done under periboal anesthesia. Uh, that's why you see the patient poorly reactive, and obviously this is surgeon's view, so everything is upside down. So we'll carefully go manually. There is some resistance, as you can see there in the areas where the original sutures were placed. Obviously, the tissue there is more fibrotic, both on the graft and, and on the host. Uh, this is, uh, for example, an area of uh, resistance. And I'm spending a lot of time to show you this because we like to uh, expose all this graft host interface and now soak it with um, Vibex Extra. This is a 0.3% riboflavin, and I will do this uh, all along suturing this inferior part of the graft host interface. So about 180 degrees worth of that interface. You can see the sutures are placed almost full thickness, uh, suturing quite tight here. I'm trying to bunch up all the loose tissue and obtain if possible, an overcorrection. Uh, you uh, probably suspected right that following this, I will perform a cross-linking session in order to reinforce the host cornea that has uh, a significant ectatic. I will, uh, at the end of placing these sutures, uh, place even more uh, Vibex Extra 0.3 riboflavin. This is a higher concentration and come to the KXL2 device by Vidro. Uh, we'll place it over the patient's eye. It has a tracker, and you'll see why. Because the cross-linking here will be performed with very high fluence, 30 milliwatts, uh, for a total of 15 joules delivered at the periphery of the cornea. And we'll see an image here. You can see how nicely uh, the hyperfluorescent ring of the UV light um, on the cornea, um, only in the perimeter of the graft host interface. Well, obviously, suturing alone will give great results. And we can see here a slip and photo uh, several months later. Um, obviously, the sutures are still tight, and you can also see the slight haziness in both the uh, graft and the host, um, which was uh, achieved uh, from the cross thinking process. And obviously, the tissue there is, uh, in lack of a better term, uh, bunched up. We're going to see some um, further nice images. You can see here the before and after, and how we're able to bring back this tissue together. and. Um, uh, and uh, follow our quest uh, to uh, reduce uh, the very high astigmatism in this cornea. Uh, surprisingly, this cornea, 24 years later, has a cell count of about 1,200 um, cells per uh, centimeter for, per millimeter square. So, not necessarily a cornea I would like to regraft. Again, another section from another part of the cornea. Uh, bottom is before, top is after. And you can see how nicely we're able to reoppose. Uh, the tissue you can also see from the hyper reflectivity of that graft host interface in the superior image the cross linking effect that we see in corneas that we cross link for uh, primary keratoconus or ectasia. And here again, I just want to remind you 
uh, the uh, cornea thickness maps by sine fluke tomography and the severe inferior steepening that we encountered in this patient. Again, best corrected here was 2200, and she was recommended to redo the graft because new keratoconus had occurred within the graft. Uh, we now know that that was not a case. And uh, we'll go to the post op tomographies uh, with sine fluke, and you can see how nicely now circled in red. The graft host interface is not anymore thin and fairly. We're able to um, redo this um, uh, degeneration, if you may, from um, uh, continuous rubbing. Of course, reinforced with this patient and any keratoconus patient that eye rubbing is a pivotal part of uh, therapy with this disease. Um, we'll uh, see some more images here showing the before and after difference. Before is on the left, after in the middle, and the dramatic uh, flattening of that very regular area that, in my opinion, is partly due to resuturing and um, bringing back that wound together and the higher, uh, very higher fluence cross-thinking and higher energy cross-thinking that we performed in order to stabilize the result. I will, of course, delay removing those sutures. Again, some nice anterior segment images with the uh, OptiView CT. I mentioned that we'll delay removing those sutures as long as we can. Patient is to correct it uh, 2040, uncorrected 2060. I think, in my opinion, a fruitful intervention for the patient. Thank you very much for observing this, uh, really.